you're a great resource as it relates to, I think, a pretty unbiased viewpoint on the situation here in Iowa. And people get after me for being critical, calling me a hater for some of the things I've said there over recent months, just on how Kirk has run this program over the past few years. And of course, you know what I'm talking about, the situation with Brian Ferentz and the promotion. I want to get your thoughts for anybody here that has not heard your thoughts, because I know you do, you do the Bigger Ten podcast and you discuss these things on a regular basis, but you know the 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 timeline here. You've got Ken O'Keefe, uh, the highest paid quarterbacks coach in the country prior to his departure. Um, Brian Ferentz, an offensive coordinator who really has never produced anything uh, resembling a, a competent offense. You've got Chuck Long going on the record on KCJJ in Eastern Iowa calling calling the whole situation nepotism. Hmm. Um, I, we talked about it. Mark and I have talked about it. Randy Hedberg, quarterbacks coach at North Dakota State, was interested in the job at Iowa. Iowa didn't even entertain that notion um, because Brian Ferentz was the QB's coach in waiting, apparently, for a former offensive lineman. Just your thoughts on the whole situation. I, again, I know you've talked about it plenty, but um, I, I've lost a little bit of respect for Kirk over recent months. I still think he's a very high character guy, but how difficult is it right now given the situation with his son? So, you know, I, I have a long history with Kirk Ferentz. It's been several years since I've had a meaningful conversation with him, since I've moved full time from sports into, you know, into news and politics. But I mean, him and I broke in together. I uh, hit my first year in sports talk radio it was his first year at the University of Iowa. Uh, I've, I had a very good relationship with him for, for many years. Um, he was always very kind to me at a low point in my career. Um, I had actually gotten fired for a job uh, for my job right before Iowa football media day. And my boss <laughs> destroyed me in the newspaper and in front of my media peers, Kirk actually came over and put his arm on my shoulder and gave me a pep talk. I've got pictures with Kirk and my kids. All right. So I'm not an Iowa fan, but I, uh, but I have known Kirk for many years and I think it, it speaks to how much goodwill he built into the bank that he survived the sort of controversies with race and everything else that went on a couple of years ago, because we live in a, in an age where uh, we've gone from overlooking those issues to maybe being too hypersensitive to them in my view. And so now anytime you're tainted with that label at all, it's instantaneous guilt. And there's no way without all the goodwill and reputation he had earned that he would have survived. Okay. But talking football, uh, I, you know, I, I, we all, and you'll know this as you get older, brother, I'm starting to get to that age now. I'm starting to get, you know, I, I just hired my, this, this does have, this will answer your question. I promise. I just hired my oldest daughter uh, to run my TikTok and Instagram accounts for my show. Why? Because I'm almost 50 years old and more people are on Instagram and TikTok than are on Facebook now. And damn it, I just don't want to learn how to use Instagram and TikTok. Screw them. I, I don't want to learn. I don't care. And I'll hire somebody. I mean, my point is there is, we do reach this sort of get off my lawn, old man yells at cloud, Grand Torino. <laughs> I didn't understand it when I was your age. Okay. I, didn't, I remember Don Patterson telling me that Hayden Fry couldn't remember the names of assistant coaches his last couple of years at Iowa. And I remember I was about your age when he told me those things. And I'm like, why the hell is he still coaching? I totally get it now. I totally get it now. I'm about that age, you know? And so I, I do think there's a little bit of, uh, because I can, because I earned it. I, I don't have to care what, you know, some schmucks on, on a YouTube channel think. I don't even know what a YouTube is. All right. And there is, there can be in an era where everybody's really flighty and, and constantly seeking social media affirmation. It is kind of nice every now and then to have someone give zero Fs about something, right? Sure. But you also got to ultimately look at the results and you have to be aware of the fact that when the OC's name is Brian Ferentz, that you're going to open yourself up to those kinds of charges. And, and, you know, I've known Chuck long for a long time. Um, and I don't know how much love lost there is between him and Kirk, because when Kirk took over the program, he froze out a lot of the old players, including Chuck. That was 20, 25 years ago, but you know, people have long memories. So um, I, I, I just think that when you elevate your son and I, and, and it's really no different than any Iowa offense we've ever seen minus the annoying bubble screens, all right? But when you anoint your son, that adds a little added extra layer of scrutiny, especially when it's pretty obvious to anybody with an IQ above 14 that the hope here is some form of ascension plan, right? That 
that he's being set up to, to, to be this successor here. And if there's anything Gary Barta has shown, it's that he likes giving contracts to people with the name Ference, right? And and so the fans like you, you know this too. You can read the tea leaves. And so you want to know, okay, are, are we going to move into the 21st century here with a new coach or are we going to stick in? So we're going to get all the things about Kirk Ferentz that we that we don't like and none of the stuff we do, right? That's what you fear about a Brian Ferentz as a head coach. And and he has not shown really that that he can break the mold. You're getting the same performance out of him you'd get from virtually anybody that Kirk hired for that position. I think the argument that I've made, Steve, is you're right. And and I'm not saying you're implying that, well, Brian's just running Kirk's offense and these are the results regardless of who's operating as the OC. But I think the argument could also be made. He's had three OCs throughout his tenure. Is it just possible that Kirk doesn't know how to hire? Is that is that possible? Because Ken O'Keefe, we want to worship Ken O'Keefe. Right. You're right. There were, I mean, two, with the exception being 2002, and even the Greg Davis, you know, everybody got after Greg Davis, but Greg Davis did lead them in part to that 12 and 0 season in 2015, which I, I get there's some skepticism about how real that was given the schedule. But um, can the argument be made that maybe the evaluation process as it relates to hiring an OC is just not there for Kirk? Well, let me go first of all. For, I, I meant to mention this when you brought up the baseball thing. We got totally screwed in that Louisville game yesterday. So schadenfreude, it worked itself out. If you're an Iowa fan, you should be okay with that, all right? But um, I'll, Ryan Day is going into his fourth year. He's on his fourth defensive coordinator, okay? And so yep. um, I, I think the one constant here is Kirk. I think you're running the offense that Kirk wanted to run. And and I think that's fine because – but the problem is with, when your name's Brian Ferentz, and your pre-hire resume doesn't really justify this hire. So we all know why you're being hired, okay? Then there's the hope or expectation. I heard this a lot when Brian first got hired. He'll be able to talk to the old man. He'll be able to you know, say things to him no one else could, and Kirk will listen. He'll bring the old man in the 21st century, and now that is not happening. And so there's a, a real sense of then what is Brian Ferentz's value then, right? I mean – um, what, what was the point? And that's where you do get the sort of nepotism, the nepotism charges. I, I think the, the real issue for Iowa football, and, and, and this is an issue, I think, for every program except for, you know, a rotating list of 10 or 15 Blue Bloods in the sport at any given time, is, is there a next level for you or not? And I, and, and I think where, I don't, I don't know that I've ever said this in my career, if I could defend Gary Barta, because I don't think much of him as an AD, but if I could defend him for a moment, if I if you made me defend him, I would say, how many programs fired the guy like Ference or allowed him to move on because they were going to go to the next level yeah. and then lost their way in that process, right? You know, there's a school right one state over here, Nebraska, that can tell you a cautionary tale about that. My team, I could tell you the cautionary tale about when when Lloyd stepped down and Michigan tried to hire Kirk Ferentz, his daughter was going to Michigan at the time, and Kirk turned them down. And yet the Lloyd Carr faction went off to get see if they could hire Pat Fitzgerald. And yet the former players wanted Les Miles, and the administration didn't want any part of Les Miles, and 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 so went off and got tried to get their own guy. And Greg Schiano said no, and and suddenly now um, you know Rich Rodriguez falls in their lap but there really wasn't a vetting process about a cultural fit. There's so many stories like that where you think you have another level. So we move on from the guy that we had. And then that next level is actually the, the way down. And I, and I, I think if I could defend Iowa in any respects, it would be that fear of, of repeating that history. You're not old enough to remember this. I used to work with a guy named Jim Zobel who called Iowa games longer than more than anybody else. And he'll tell I, I used to hear the stories from him working with him in the afternoons on WHO. I mean, he used to tell me about working 20 straight years without a winning season. I used to hear all those stories until Hayden Fry showed up, you know? And so that's where I think Iowa they, has some fear, which is if we try to take that next step, do we actually take a step back? And, and here's the last thing. And then Mark, I'll throw it back over to you. Cause I know we want to move on from this subject, but Again, piggybacking off the, this is this is Kirk's offense. This is yeah, Kirk's comfort zone. 
um, you know, not really giving the reins to Brian. And of course, that's not a new theory. We've heard that tossed around for years, really. But what I don't understand, Steve, is if if Brian is the head coach in waiting, or at least that's what we all assume that's what Kirk wants. I don't know why, how that how that's not possible. That's what Kirk wants. We know that. Um, why would you? Why on earth would you hold back if that if that's actually happening? Why would you hold back Brian for, from changing things? You've got, a, you've got an yeah. offense that's ranked 123rd in total offense. He ain't getting appointed. He ain't getting hired as a head coach with 123rd ranked offense. I don't care if his last name is Ferentz. It's not I think happening. That's a great point. I, I think that's a great point. And and if you look at maybe, you know, two of the best seasons or the two best seasons Kirk had, um, you know, you had Brad Banks finish runner-up for yes. the Heisman Trophy, and you had Drew Tate reset the Iowa passing, you know, record book post Hayden Fry. Um, and I don't understand go, not going and getting competition – uh, out of the transfer portal that made no mistake what's or no sense to me on any level Thank you. whatsoever. Um, I don't have a good answers to those questions other than my story about hiring my daughter to run my TikTok account because I'm getting <laughs> older and I don't want to learn. Okay. And that's, that's about the best answer I can give you. And, and let's remember, Steve, I've said this to Mark a million times. People have gotten tired of us talking about it. This was the most active year in the transfer portal at right. quarterback with competent passers and playmakers in the portal that we've ever seen mm -hmm. ever. And it might be the, the one year where they needed it the most and they didn't even entertain it. Mark, do you, uh, anything to add to this? Well, this topic? That, that was going to be my next point slash comment slash question to Steve was that's the defense for the administration that you don't know. You want to stay with the proven fear that you're going to go into a situation that you don't want to be in. So why don't we stay with something? That's the defense for the administration, the defense for the coaching staff led by, Kirk himself, I don't know what it is because when you've been mired in the 100s in total offense, we posted a video here looking at what the metrics have looked like for the last 15 years, and you're going eight and four on average, and you've got the special teams and the defense nailed down. Why don't you? It's not even taking a risk, I don't think. There's only upside there in making personnel changes and in updating your your approach and, and to be clear it'd be one thing if kirk ferentz was in a position where he's just trying to ride off into the sunset and and like you just brought up just he wants to maintain the eight and four nine and three year in year out uh routine but no he's 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 got to the, the needle has to move on that side of the ball for his end goal his master plan of, of getting brian this job to actually transpire so it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me I know we we want to move on from this topic, but uh, I I appreciate your perspective on it, Steve, because uh, I feel like I was the only person throughout the last six months screaming for Iowa go, to go to the portal at quarterback, and the only explanation I ever got was a no quarterback wants to come to Iowa, and my my response to that is how the heck do you know that when you don't even try, right? right. <laughs> and B uh, he'll never do it, so uh, I, I guess the latter is true, but uh, it doesn't take away from the frustration. Mark, do you? you want to get into this matchup we can talk more about iowa michigan well we are certainly five months away from a matchup so th this is more to the point in regards to the landscape of the conference and these two teams in particular i i would just point to kirk making certain comments that have been noticeable to me because most coaches when they put their their team or their program up against um, the metrics usually deal with the nation and Kirk Ferentz seems to be so locked into the big 10. And, and that's not a criticism necessarily It's just an observation that he, I don't think is thinking national. I don't think he's thinking anything besides let's win this division and whatever happens after that happens. And, um, again, for a guy that's accomplished so much and brought this program to where it is, I just don't see the downside to trying to break through that glass ceiling of sorts and steve from, from what you understand to be true is there any substance to the claim that if kirk allows an outsider to change things drastically on offense as it relates to philosophy or play play calling whatever the case may be or personnel we are going to go out and get a dual threat guy does that really take away from what i was trying to do on defense because i hear that all the time oh, this is complimentary football i don't know how you can have 123rd ranked offense complement any defense i think Mark has talked. We, I know how you feel about this, Mark. I think if anything, it's going to help the defense. Correct? 